Folks been getting a lot of questions about tillers recently. And since I needed to get mine out today and try to, well, get it ready for spring, I thought maybe it'd be a good chance to answer some of those questions and just review some things about tillers in general. Um, I've got a complete episode on tillers. Um, it's called Choosing the Right Tiller for Your Compact Tractor. I also have a web article with it as well on our website, tractortimewithtim.com. I'll put a link in the description below. The website article goes into a bit more detail. It's always hard in a video episode to remember everything that I want to talk about uh, and to get it all in. Lots of times I'm reminded of something first time in the comments section. Somebody says, hey, you didn't mention this. Well, that happened in the Tiller episode. But I corrected that in the website article. So um, check out tractortimewithtim.com. Uh, go through that article. You'll see links to several Tiller video episodes that I've got there to kind of describe in, in a little bit more detail. I hope maybe these can help you decide what tiller you want to get uh, for your subcompact tractor. But today we're going to take a little bit of a different look. Rather than talk about a new tiller or show you a tiller from a trade show floor, we're going to look in detail at my older tiller. I've had this tiller for five years now and I bought it used. I think it was a couple of years old when I bought it, but it hadn't been used very much. It uh, wasn't very worn at all. It is worn now. So let's take a look at that. I want to start by showing some of these dents here in the top. That's from rocks. If you hit big rocks with a tiller, it makes an awful noise. You think you're tearing everything up. Well, from my experience with this tiller, you aren't tearing everything up, but you may dent your tiller a little bit. We have those all over the tiller. It's not like a one-time thing. This is uh, something that I've encountered frequently. In fact, if you're tilling anything more than your own garden that you've uh, worked and cared for for years, any time you're working for a neighbor or friends or custom work like we do, you're going to hit unexpected objects. This tiller has hit rebar. Uh, got an episode of that where we got rebar all wrapped around the tines. It's tough as nails, I'll say that. Now, before I go any further, I would say this is probably not the tiller I would buy today. If I was going to buy a tiller, more on that in a minute, but this is a rock solid machine. Now I've dented this back piece. I've got it straightened out now where it's working. Uh, but at one point I think I backed into something and you can see here where it had rubbed. That's where it had been dented. Um, so that's a problem that sometimes happens on these tillers. I think most tillers are made the same way with the chain back here. Uh, I usually leave the chain pretty long and let this just drag along on the soil after it's been tilled. Some people pull that up. I don't really want it pulled up. I don't want to throw in any more dirt out than, than I can help. Look, I love this tiller, but as I mentioned, I probably wouldn't buy this tiller if I were buying today. And that's only for one reason. There's so many things I really like about this particular unit, but there's one thing that I don't. By default, when it comes from the store, it is not quick hitch compatible. So if you look right down here, I've had to extend these pins by extra long pins to make it quick hitch compatible. As you can see, those pins bend backwards over time. It's because they're extended outwards so far um, that it causes stress on those pins. So both of the pins on the lift side here are bent backwards. At first that might seem confusing. Why do they bend backwards? Well, they always do. I've actually broken one set of pins and had to replace. They bend backwards because when that tiller is spinning forwards, it is pushing the tractor forwards. It's a constant strain and it's kind of a hammering strain. Hey, I can shake the camera like that. That hammering over time just puts a lot of stress on those pins and they'll eventually break. Now the original pins that come with it are shorter. They're fine. As long as you don't use a quick hitch, you won't encounter that issue. The other aspect on the quick hitch is it wouldn't quite fit in here. I had to, uh, uh, change how this was made a little bit. I got a video on that how to make a king cutter XB tiller quick hitch compatible Full video on that from several years ago. I'll try to put a link to that in the description Okay, we'll raise the tiller up and we'll take a look underneath see what it looks like Now as we get under here, I'm a little bit embarrassed and ashamed at the care I've taken of this machine uh, I parked it outside all winter 
really didn't have much choice. You've seen the work we've been doing inside our shed. There's just not room um, while we were doing the work and and maybe not even after. I've, I've really got to work on finding some better storage. Got some of that in the works. Of course, this virus has, has changed everything. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but in addition to storing it outside, I just parked it out there without cleaning it up at all. Now, some of that you won't have to worry about if you're working by yourself on your own property. When you're done tilling, you'll know it. And you can take the time and put your tiller away. For me, I don't necessarily know if I'm gonna need the tool again. When I parked this, I thought I was gonna be using it the very next day, but that job kind of vaporized and then I didn't get around to it. Probably never happened to you, but hey, it's reality around here. I don't know, that was some sort of a mesh, nylon type webbing. It might've been one of those straw mats that someone had laid out prior years. Now this is just natural, you're gonna get stuff wrapped around these tines. Usually I find that it doesn't, you know, wrap around bad enough to bog up the tiller or, or choke it up in any way. And the, there is one area that I am worried about it a little bit, and that's over here at these bearings. And I do see a little oil out here. You can sometimes get stuff wrapped up in a bearing and essentially destroy it. So I probably need to have a closer look in here. This seal is leaking up here. That's not good news, it needs to be replaced. I really don't know right off the top of my head how to get the part, so I'll have to do some research on that. Um, it's a little bit more difficult, I think, when you're dealing with a big box store. Uh, King cutters are sold a lot of places, but I don't really know right off the top of my head how to get parts, so I'm gonna have to dig into that, see if I can figure out how to get that seal replaced. Um, I assume I'll have to take it apart here and get to it that way, and unfortunately this is the side that has the the gear drive. I may even have to drain all that heavy ADW90 oil out of there. We'll see how that goes. But that's not a project for today. I did get all of the spindle cleaned off. This seal over here looks fine. Looks like it's dry over here. So that's good. Here's the pile of stuff I cleared off of that axle. I think Mary likes it. So let's talk a little bit about the tines. You can see that there is some wear. There's quite a lot of wear, actually. Oh, they're not probably at the stage of breaking yet because they're, they're still pretty thick back here. Um, but there's a lot worn off of them. They're sharp, but I felt like this past season it didn't dig quite as well as it did in, in seasons past. I may get some new tines next year. That might be a, uh, an experiment to see if it actually digs any better or if I made this all up. I guess I thought maybe it didn't dig quite as well because the tines were worn here. Um, if that it hits the ground first, it's not going to dig. It's not sharp way down there, but it is sharp here. Now this is not the original PTO shaft that came with this unit. Uh, I bought this unit used, like I said, and it had been used on a very tiny tractor. So they had cut the PTO shaft very short. I didn't know any other way to solve the problem at the time, so I went and bought a new PTO shaft. I think I bought it from Agri Supply with a new slip clutch and everything. That slip clutch is actually a little bit too big uh, for this unit. You'll see it almost rubs there. I had to grind the tiller down a little bit to keep it from rubbing. So let me review now some important characteristics for a tiller. The first thing about tillers is tiller rule number one. Watch my other video, you'll hear me repeat that quite often. Uh, I kind of made this up, but tiller rule number one to me is that no matter what tiller you buy, you'll be happy. And I've never heard of anyone say, I wish I had got a different tiller or my tiller doesn't work well. So please don't take any of the comments I have here as uh, being negative towards a given tiller or a given brand of tiller. Uh, that's not the point here at all. But a lot of you are looking for more guidance. How, how do you choose? There's a lot of brands available. Well, there's a few characteristics that I look for. One characteristic is I want six tines on every flange. Okay, if you look at how this is made, each one of these is called a tine. This is the flange. I want six tines on every flange. Some tillers have only four tines per flange. Well, how is four tines versus six tines potentially gonna make a difference? Well, there's a lot of debate on this. In my case, I feel like that if I'm spinning the same speed here, 
I want more tines hitting the ground. I want it essentially spinning faster. So six tines versus four tines is going to be a 50% faster chopping rate. And I really like that. Uh, again, it's just an opinion. I want a gear drive tiller. A lot of folks say that a chain drive, which is the other mechanism that can be used to drive between this shaft and this shaft, is just as good as a gear drive, and it may be, but for whatever reason, I feel more comfortable with a gear drive. I just think that that's gonna be a, a more solid, longer lasting approach. I've not had any trouble with mine. I think maybe I've heard of one or two broken chains uh, in comments, but it, it's, it may not be a big deal, but I want a gear drive tiller. For a subcompact tractor, I want a four foot tiller and I want it to be centered. The 1025R, 1023R are 47 inches wide. A 48 inch tiller is a perfect match for it. Any larger is gonna tax you a little bit from a horsepower standpoint, and any smaller, or an offset 48 even, would not cover your tracks very well. I want a slip clutch. I do not want a shear bolt. I don't wanna be replacing shear bolts in the field. And I want quick hitch compatibility from the factory. Didn't know that I wanted that when I bought this tiller. And while I was able to adjust it to make it work, I would prefer to have one that's built a little bit wider right in here so that I won't have those pins bending on me all the time. Now there are several brands that meet this requirement. This six footer that I have for the 2038R meets all of the requirements I just mentioned from Toughline, Monroe Toughline. I think uh, it's a fabulous tiller. So I'm still leaving you some flexibility. I know some of you have probably already tilled your gardens if you live further south than we do. So you've had your tiller out, you've already used it this spring. For those of you, I'm envious. I can't do that yet. For those of you who live in areas that you haven't got your tiller out of the shed yet, you better get it out and hooked on. Make sure it's ready to go. Make sure you don't have a bunch of stuff wrapped around the shaft and take better care of your seal here on the main axle than I did. If you're looking for a tiller, I hope this has helped. In any case, stay healthy and thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.